All right, our next guest, a friend of the show, a personal friend, a member of the World Go- uh, seriously, World Handicap Committee, which I didn't even know existed. You no, think I Craig would have told me that this committee existed and he's been on it for five years. They created this just to make sure that you uh, don't fudge your hand. That's it, so that I'm not fudging. Against Dustin Scully. That's it. He's with Golf Ontario. He's with Golf Canada. He does a lot of things for both organizations. In fact, we can't get into this today, but we'll have him on during the year because he's uh, all over the Ontario Open and making sure that event is what it needs to be, be as well. But today he's here to talk about the World Handicap System, uh, Craig Lockery. Craiger, how you doing this morning, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, guys. Okay, so... New World Handicap System in place. Uh, there's there's a lot of confusion around it, as should be expected, because it's new. Uh, some of the bullet points that people need uh, to know about this is this this is governing bodies from all around the world, including Golf Canada, but RNA, USGA, etc. You've been sitting in, uh, at a brainstorm table for five years uh, with this World Handicap Committee uh, to, to get this done, this new system done. So... Uh, Let's start with the formula. How has the formula changed in terms of how index and whatnot is calculated now? Yeah, so uh, that's a new change for us here in Canada. Uh, we always used to call it handicap factor. Uh, handicap index is now a global term that will be used across all different countries that are using this system. Uh, so I'd say that's one primary change. The other is that, yeah, the actual formula itself changed, whereas we used to average the low 10 of your most recent 20 scores to get your handicap uh, factor or now index calculated. We'll actually be averaging your low 8 of your most recent 20. So I think that's a, you know, a fundamental or major change in the formula itself. Um, and I know there's a whole bunch of other goodies that are actually baked into the formula itself that we're actually going to talk through those topics over the next few minutes. Okay, so one of those I see is cap mechanism. Tell me what that. <laughs> tell me exactly what that means and uh, why I should know what it means. Yeah, so uh, loosely we call this a, a cap on a cap, if you will. So uh, what that means is that we'll actually only allow, or the system will only allow your handicap index to move up uh, a certain amount over a certain period of time. So, and there are actually two types of caps. There's a hard cap and a soft cap. And so the soft cap, what it does is it, we, there's two parts to the, that formula. One, we calculate what this new uh, term that we created, low handicap index. And the low handicap index is just that. Over the last 365 days, we calculate what the low handicap index for everybody that's in the system. And we uh, only apply the soft cap if it tries to rise more than three uh, from that low cap. So, and we do that incrementally at a 50% um, basis. So if you, um, you know, are one stroke over what your handicap index would be, we'll actually just apply a 0.5 um, cap to your handicap index. And then the, the second, just the second part is just the hard cap guys, where you'll reach a maximum uh, of five that will allow you to increase over that 365 day period. So for example, if you were a 12 handicap index and, uh, you had a real string of run of a, a bad golf over the next, you know, six to eight months and your handicap index calculated would be 20. We actually won't let you get to the 20. We will actually hard cap you at 17, the maximum of five. So but before we continue here, because this sounds to me Craig, like there are some safety checks in place, for lack of a better t- uh, term, uh, of what you have determined, you being the World Handicap Committee, have determined are, are fair percentages in terms of, you know, it is almost impossible to increase a number by X in Y amount of time, that you've got almost a safety net in place to protect the players, the system, the integrity of an event, a club, a league already in place here is is am i reading that correctly you 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 are and and there are a couple of more that are baked in that we're going to talk about but at the world handicap committee level uh, obviously we've got some pretty serious resources in behind us and um you know we've got former nasa scientists and former um uh, u.s navy uh, um, uh statistics and, and mathematics uh experts and, and those gentlemen were the ones that performed the research for us and presented it to the committee. 
And as a committee, a global committee, these were some of the things that we agreed to. And, and they just know that statistically speaking, it's a little bit unreasonable over a, a one-year period for somebody to, you know, go from, uh, you know, almost double or more uh, in their handicap index. It's just, uh, you know, and, and if there are, there are reasons for that. There might be an injury that's involved, and, and that's just something that the, the, handic- the formula itself won't be able to correct, but a handicap committee in place at the club would be able to recognize those things. Okay, one of the most interesting things in the new system that has got everybody's eyebrow raised is PCC, which is a playing uh, conditions calculation. The fact that you are taking you know, the playing conditions as a new element into how we uh, record a handicap. Uh, give, give us the rundown on this because there is a lot of people talking about this. Yeah, I, I think this was probably one of the number one things that a lot of people didn't like about our previous system was that from day to day, if we had some inclement weather or tough conditions just in general, um, that that score would go into your record and it it probably wasn't going to be a counter. So um, it was like an inflated score that just probably shouldn't have gone into the system. And um, other parts of the world had uh, pieces of this PCC or playing conditions calculation already in their systems and this was something that was presented to uh, the world handicap committee and what we did was we we took the opportunity to make a few upgrades to uh, this calculation and how it works is basically it's all data driven so um, you're not going to have to program weather conditions into your uh, into the handicap software to help us uh, you know figure out what this PCC adjustment should be Uh, we're actually just going to analyze the scores that are posted that day from everybody from that particular golf course. And uh, it doesn't matter what tee, it doesn't matter what gender, as long as we have a minimum of eight scores from players with a 36.0 index or less, uh, post at least those eight scores, this PCC calculation will run in the background and it will tell us whether um, you know there needs to be an adjustment for PCC. And it, and it does that by... We know, uh, again, leaning on those researchers and those really smart guys, um, they know statistically speaking what should happen in relation to the course and slope rating that have been issued. And if it falls out of an acceptable threshold, then there will be an adjustment made to that scoring differential. Um, and, and, you know, rightfully so. And it could go either way. It could swing either way. It could be conditions were extremely tough. It got windy. Um, maybe maybe uh, the course was set up really difficult that day. The tees were set back and it played a lot longer. Maybe it was rain, again, no roll, um, and the course played more difficult. Or it could be the other way. Uh, maybe tees were set up more forward and the course played 300 yards shorter um, and, and we might uh, adjust your differential accordingly. Okay, I'm on the edge of my seat here. Uh, we've always had a course <laughs> handicap. I know it's complicated stuff, but it is well-meaning. But we've also always had a, a course handicap as as well, and that's different when you go from course to course or whatever tee you play. Um, is that the same situation? Is that still existing now? So when you go to a course, you'll have figure out your number. Yeah, Bob. That's uh, it. It seems like a simple question. Oh, course handicap. We used to just take your handicap index, multiply it by slope of the tees, divide by one thirteen, and round to the nearest whole stroke to get what you know, you would play from for that day. Um, We've baked something into the formula that is a little bit different. It's that same calculation, except we've added course rating minus par uh, to this component. And we did that for a couple of reasons. One, in the old system, and I'm sure that you guys did this too, the number one question that we would get asked, uh, you know, at Golf Canada and Golf Ontario is, from the front set of tees to the back set of tees, my course handicap only changes by maybe one, two strokes maximum. Uh, how can that be? Because I, I know I'm not going to shoot one or two strokes difference from the front tee to the back tee. And they were absolutely right, but they were forgetting one component that was built into the, you know, the course and slope rating system. And that was we needed to take into account the difference in the two course ratings. That tells us the difficulty uh, from that front and back T. And so what we did was we actually baked that into the course handicap formula on purpose so that it's more intuitive, so that it's more in line with what people are thinking. And a lot of people think in relation to par. Um, so that was the major reason for that change. So what you will see now is the difference in your course handicap being calculated from the front T to the back T 
might differ might differentiate by ten to maybe twelve strokes in some cases. Wow. So, that's yeah. a huge That's jump. True. That is a major change, especially in terms of league play at clubs or men's nights where they say, you know, pick whatever tee you want, choose yeah. to go here, choose to go there. That's a, that's a huge difference. Craig, we only have about a minute left, and I know there's a new maximum score in terms of equitable stroke controls or how we used to refer to it. So c- c- before we let you go, we, we need to let our, our listeners know that. So tell us a new way of doing that. And also, because there's so much information here, if people want to know more about this, which they should, they need to get educated on this where do they go are you guys having seminars is this stuff available online where where do people go yeah okay so we'll start with maximum whole score and that used to be esc as you said mark uh, equitable stroke control and this is when you can pick up once you've reached your maximum on on the whole that was uh always a part of the handicap system and will continue to be uh we just returned at maximum whole score and we introduced a, a new term here in North America. It's, it's been prominent more in Europe and, and the UK, uh, where their maximum whole score was called net double bogey. So that's a new term for us to kind of digest and get used to here. And what net double bogey is, is basically par, plus any handicap strokes that you're entitled to on that p- particular hole, depending on what the stroke index uh, allocation is on that particular hole, plus two for the double bogey component. So... Um, that's relative to each individual golfer. Um, for, for the listeners that, that do carry a handicap and are interested in this, um, there's a real simple way that you can apply this uh, before posting your scores for handicap purposes. Really easy. Just post your scores hole by hole in the Golf Canada Score Center. They'll automatically be adjusted for net double bogey. All right, so they, they don't even have to know the math on this. If they want to just go put in 18 individual scores, the software will do this for them. That's right. And across Canada, we have about 20% of our players that are posting hole by hole now. Uh, And the ask for the rest of the individuals is really just 16 extra keystrokes. All right. Uh, uh, Where do we go online, uh, Craig? And I know you guys are really good at education in terms of putting people in the room, getting seminars. Are you guys going to be going club to club or offer this to the public golfer if they want to come and learn more about this? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's welcome. Uh, We've got a few things uh, in the hopper. Uh, This past fall, we ran a bunch of club seminars, had about 300 people attend uh, from various clubs across the province. And I know the same thing is happening throughout the country. Uh, Same thing. I, you know, for more information, you can go to golfcanada.ca, go into the Handicap Resource Center, or you can go to uh, GAO. Again, to the Handicap Resource Center, there's all kinds of the schedule of when our in-person cars are this spring, so everybody can go there. Craig, thanks so much for your time. Uh, the system is, is way more intuitive. It's a smarter system. It's going to take, obviously, a bit of time and a learning curve for a lot of people, but I think at the end of the day, y- you've got some big wins in this new system, and uh, you know we'll have to get ourselves uh, educated. But thanks for your time, and we got to get you on to talk Ontario Open as we get closer as well, okay? Would love that. Thanks, guys. Craig Lockery, Golf Canada, Golf Ontario.